Hello everyone and in this video I will tell you about the malfunctions in the boilers that I encountered in this contract. This shuttle tanker has two identical water tube boilers. In the pictures you can see the dimensions and the internal arrangement of the water tube boiler. The starboard side boiler now in operation. This can be seen from flame eye detectors that show the presence of a flame in the boiler furnace and the flame is registered using a photosensitive element, a flame sensor. Go up to the upper deck and look at these photocells elements. By the way, the flame eye sensor are fairly reliable and there were no problem with them in this contract. Two flame eye sensor attached through spatial ball and socket joint to adjust the angle of the viewing direction. And if set at the right angle, you can configure one to register the flame of pilot burner and the second to the main burner. I will show you how it works a little later. The flame sensor uses five wires and connected to the flame eye controller which is installed in the switchboard. The diagram also shows the flame indicator. Next to the flame detectors we see a pilot burner and wires that go to the ignition electrodes. Common problem in this contract was carbon deposits on the electrodes due to poor fuel quality and poor optimization of the nozzle, which led to an error in the automatic start of the boiler. Engineers remove the pilot burner and take it to the workshop. A high voltage transformer supply power to the electrodes that are already cleaned of carbon deposits. After carefully studying the design of the assembly according to the manual and adjust the correct air gap, we can proceed to the test. 15,000 volts is applied to the electrodes of a certain frequency. And when the burner is assembled, air is injected into the tube, which pushes the spark along the bent electrodes to the jet of fuel sprayed by the nozzle. After cleaning the pilot burner, carry out an automatic start of the boiler. On the flame indicators, we can see the sequence of burner's operation. Automatic start is successful, all work is carried out under the supervision of the experienced second engineer. The frequent nuisance was carbon deposits on the main burner, which, when the boiler was stopped, caused an error due to the presence of fire in the furnace. In this case, it is necessary to stop the boiler and clean the main burner. It is also important to learn how to program various electronic temperature indicators and understand how they affect the operation of the boiler, so that if they fail, you can start the boiler in emergency mode. A temporary solution was to replace the faulty signal transmitter with jumpers, which made it possible to restore the indication of the water level in the boiler on the engine control console. It is important to understand the circuit in order to clearly understand where such a solution is applicable. The main malfunction was a failure in the power supply unit in the flame eye controller. When the boiler was started in automatic mode, the flame was not registered of one of the flame eye sensor, and in fact the flame was present in the boiler furnace. The first step was to replace the power supply unit of the controller and there was a malfunction in it. The next malfunction was the failure of the main power supply unit of the port side boiler. After the release of the corresponding alarm and triplet of ACB, the boiler still continued to work properly and that's why. Let's analyze the operation of the electrical circuit. In normal condition, 220 volts is supplied through the UPC to the main power supply unit. Then 24 volts power is supplied to the control and alarm circuits. Auxiliary relays are energized. 
when the main power supply unit and the circuit breaker tripped, which led to the de-energization of the relay, which caused the corresponding alarm. But the boiler continued its operation due to the fact that this boiler is now powered through the main power supply unit of the starboard side boiler, which can be seen from the diagram. Diodes are needed for the safe operation of power supply unit in parallel. If two power supply of both boiler fail, this relay will de-energize and the power supply circuit of the transmitter will receive power through the next circuit. The next troubleshooting step is to replace the faulty power supply unit to appropriate another one. A frequent problem was the clogging of the tubes suitable for the pressure sensors. On the switchboard see the low fuel pressure alarm, but on the pressure cage we see the presence of fuel pressure. In this case it was possible to clean the clogged test valve with a pressure calibrator. During the contract there were many interesting malfunctions in the boiler systems. Replacement of heaters in solenoid valves, a problem with the indication in the PLC, checking the calibration of pressure sensors and so on, which I will talk about in new video. And our friendly machine team always helped me in troubleshooting. Так,